Well, I hope you all are buckled up because there's some major beef happening in Denver Broncos country, and I need you all to help me decide how I feel about this. We're going to go over what really is going on right now with Cortland Sutton. What are the potential options? What does he want? What can the team even do about this? And really, ultimately, leave it up to you to decide, figure all this thing out for me in the comments, because truly, uh, after looking at this for, you know, 20 minutes before I went hit record on here. I don't even know how I feel, but let's uh, dive into the big news of the day. And that is we're in day two of voluntary off season workouts. Uh, those are voluntary, but truly like you show up um, if you're invested in this team and Cortland Sutton, according to Mike Pelissero did not show up to day one or day two and intends to hold out because he wants a new contract. So uh, he has two years remaining on this contract. He is this year, like this upcoming year and the year after. We remember for a while here, George Payton was absolutely lambasted because of uh, we had the top paid receiving room in the entire NFL with Tim Patrick injured, not even playing, Jerry Judy massively underperforming, uh, and then Cortland Sutton not having another 1,000-yard receiving season since his, his big injury. So Cortland Sutton sees dudes like, um, sees Calvin Ridley, sees... Uh, you know, Mike Evans sees Jerry Judy, all these guys who you could say he's in the same conversation with go out and get mega, mega dollars. And he, he's just sitting there saying, hey, I'm just as good as these guys. And now I'm seeing all of these players who um, who used to be leaders on this team are gone. And I'm truly like the veteran presence on this team in, now. And you need to pay me like these other veteran presences on their team. Uh, and all of this, really, it just goes back to the Cortland uh, Sutton goodbye message that we all saw right as um, the season ended last year. You just saw him post this picture right in the middle of Justin Simmons, who's gone, and Russell Wilson, obviously, who's gone. And then you read uh, really the big lines of his good, his message where, like, I gave everything to this team every time I stepped on the field and I trust God's plans for everything and whatever comes next for me. So this isn't something that just cropped up now. I think this is truly something that's been uh, brewing for quite a while. I, when he made this message, I made a video a long time ago saying, Hey, he's probably on his way out too. And then Jerry Judy got traded. Uh, we still have two years left on him. And I think, uh, you know, then you saw after Jerry Judy and Russell Wilson got, um, Russell got cut, Jerry Judy got traded, and um, Justin Simmons got cut as well. You see him tweet out the picture from the last scene of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, really alluding to the fact like this run is over. You know, that Will Smith show was going on for a while, and it was over. This is the last scene. So really, he's been building up to this big goodbye um, and, and I think, um, he definitely has some merit to what he's saying. Like he is, I think a number one player. The thing that is very interesting to me is, is the fact that he's going to kind of have to talk out of two sides of his mouth on this issue, because, um, really the only thing that has stopped Cortland Sutton's production from eclipsing a Mike Evans or eclipsing a, uh, Calvin Ridley is the fact that he was limited by co poor quarterback play, but then he is quick to defend Russell Wilson. You see that all over the place. So you can't really talk out of two sides of your mouth and be like, Russell Wilson's the man, the Broncos did him dirty, but I'm not getting the kind of numbers I want because I don't have a good quarterback. And so I think this is going to, um, if he has a leg to stand on with the Denver Broncos, when he goes in and tries to ask for more money, it truly, he's going to need to say, I was limited by a quarterback and Sean Payton, you were right to let Russell Wilson go because you put me with a competent quarterback and my numbers are going to be better than anyone else in the league. I'm going to show you how, uh, while his numbers, uh, he had 10 touchdowns last season. He hasn't hit that thousand mark, um, that thousand yard mark since his catastrophic knee injury in 2019. But he's played for 10 different quarterbacks. He's played for Paxton Lynch, Trevor Simeon. Uh, remember when we played that wide receiver at quarterback for a game? Like he's played with 10 different quarterbacks over his time, and he's been the one steadfast, like standout thing on our team. And um, I really think the Broncos are between a rock and a hard place on this issue because if Sean Payton wants to set up a new quarterback to succeed, Cortland Sutton needs to be a part of that picture. Like you can't throw a J.J. McCarthy or Bo Nix or Michael Penix Jr. out there with, um, like, we don't have Jerry Judy anymore. We have a tight end who is questionable, 
with health. We have uh, a running back who's coming back from a knee injury himself. Like we need Cortland Sutton to be the leader on this team. But uh, I think this shows that George Payton definitely wasn't wrong in in his re-signing of Cortland Sutton. And we, we now see that that was a favorable contract for the Broncos because Cortland Sutton's like, I'm not even going to play on it. Uh, looking at a, a couple other things here, um, we see a lot of people speculating that um, the Denver Broncos could be forced to move on from him or do you just wait him out and, and say, hey, we got you under contract. We're going to wait you out. You're here or, or don't show up. Uh, there's speculation out there now that the Denver Broncos might try to trade him. I think at best, knowing that when he goes to another team, he's going to want a brand new deal there as well. So I don't think the Denver Broncos could get more than like a fourth round draft pick like they did in in the Jerry Judy trade, Um, essentially with the fifth and the sixth from Cleveland. They give that as far as points. They say that's about a fourth round equivalency with getting both those picks. And I really don't think uh, Cortland Sutton would get much more than that. But this is definitely... um, just drummed up a lot of drama, but you just look at some of these other players around the league. You see Calvin Ridley, four year, ninety two million dollars, and Cortland Sutton only has two million left on this guarantee. But you see players like Garrett Bowles is showing up to a voluntary offseason workout, and he has no more guaranteed money. If he gets hurt tomorrow, he could be gone, and so you could see him doing that. So I would, I would like to see Cortland Sutton honor his contract. Um, I know that sounds a little uh, hypocritical of me because I, I wanted um, Russell Wilson to open his contract and, and renegotiate it. But it it is just odd to me that Cortland Sutton was clearly the most in Russell Wilson's camp of anyone else on the Broncos. The only person who knew about the Broncos asking Russell Wilson to open his contract was, was Cortland Sutton. And so Cortland Sutton is like, hey, that's so messed up. The Broncos should honor their contract. But then he's not honoring the Broncos contract. So it it really does seem a little hypocritical for him to be upset about Russell Wilson being asked to um, open his contract, but then he won't honor the contract. Those just seem kind of like they're um, just very, um, yeah, kind of combating ideas there. So then you see Mike Evans, even though he's quite a bit older than uh, Cortland Sutton has a lot more miles on that body, has a $52 million deal. And while you would argue that um, Mike Evans has statistically just dominated um, Cortland Sutton, if you had Tom Brady for a couple of years, I think Cortland Sutton would be a different wide receiver under Tom Brady than he was under um, Russell Wilson and even under Baker Mayfield. I think Baker outplayed Russell Wilson these past couple of years, and the fact that he's playing on a mega contract shows that the Buccaneers think that as well. Uh, but if you just look at it by the numbers, most uh, like closest aligned, you see Calvin Ridley. Uh, let's look at his production compared to uh, Cortland Sutton. So you look at, at him and you see that while he has played in less games, he's, he only has 66 games where Cortland Sutton has 81. You just see that like they are in the same conversation. It, you know, I would say I would rather have Cortland Sutton than Calvin Ridley, but you they're in the same conversation. I'm sure a lot of people would prefer Calvin Ridley to Cortland, uh, but you just look here that um, Calvin Ridley in his time has 4,200 yards, and you look, or that's that's Sutton, 4,200. Ridley has him by a couple yards here, 100 yards in less games. Uh, but I think the, the big thing is just looking at the targets, that even though he has less games in Cortland, he has 516 targets, and Cortland Sutton has 511 targets. So Cortland Sutton clearly gets targeted less, and that is because of the quarterbacks that Sutton had that he he didn't have as many opportunities to shine as Ridley did. So it, as he goes into these negotiations with the Broncos, he's saying, you get me a competent quarterback and I'm going to be better. Well, then don't be in Russell Wilson's camp because your limit, your ceiling was dictated by Russell Wilson and we moved on from it. So uh, I don't know if that's what Cortland is going to say to the team. And and that's going to be just a really, really interesting thing to see as we move forward. But really Andrew Mason has an awesome poll on his Twitter. I'll throw uh, a very similar community post up here, but I really want you all the way in, in the comments here. Let me know what would you do if you were the Denver Broncos GM? Um, should we wait him out and just be like, Hey, we need you. We're counting on you to be a leader. 
this was a horrible deal for us a couple of years ago when we had the top paid receiving room in the entire league and you guys greatly underperformed. And so now we're asking you to step up and honor your contract. Um, so that's option one, but that can get messy. And as, as Sean's trying to make his stamp on this team and a team where everyone's bought in and we're rebuilding this thing together, that's a hard, hard thing to do when like you have one team member who so has his um, stake in the ground, that's hard to move on with that. So that's a hard option. Give him a new contract. I think that the Broncos just aren't in the place where we're ready to work. We're coming out of that Russell Wilson dead cap money and we just, we have him under contract for two years. So giving a new one, uh, that's, that's a big ask. And I, I don't want to be throwing Calvin Ridley or Mike Evans money at him when he hasn't had a thousand yard receiving, um, since 2019. So I'd like to see him be one of the top receivers in the league before we give him top receiver in the league money. But I also understand what he's saying. Other options would be, do we trade him? And, and like I said, I think if we got a fourth round pick, we would be jumping on that. And I, I think fourth round is the ceiling for that because whoever gets him is going to have to give him money and then release. Um, there've been several fairly credible reporters who say that's on the table. I really hope that's not like, I, I don't think there's any really reason to release him, at least try to get some trade capital if that's our only option. I hope there's one more option in here that uh, I think you only get four poll options on X, but I think the, the last option is could we somehow keep this same contract numbers, like that's what he's making, but make it guaranteed money instead? That way he's not worried about injuries or anything like that. Could we do that in a way that makes him feel like, all right, well, at least if I blow out my ACL, I'm guaranteed this money. I think that could maybe be like the bridge there, but it's going to be really, really interesting to see what the Broncos do. Uh, could he be packaged in a trade on draft day to get the quarterback of the future? But again, if, if you are JJ McCarthy, you need a Cortland Sutton. If you're Drake may, you need a Cortland Sutton. This is all messy, uh, but at least there's tons to talk about and think about as we move into this off season. As always, I'm counting on your comments to let me know how I actually feel about this. Cause y'all are crazy smart Broncos country. Let's giddy up. <sighs> I wanted to make it for court.